All right, this is Chaplain Bob Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the kingdom of God. Turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Somebody send a memo to the TV preachers, please. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. For nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? And raiment's just an old word for uh, clothing. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Wherefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we, we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth, that ye have need of all these things. Listen carefully to the words of Jesus. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not our righteousness, his righteousness. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Good advice. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Good advice. All right, turn to, to Matthew chapter 12. Oh, let's see, verse 22. Then was brought unto him, who's him? Jesus. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him. Who healed him? Jesus insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, now who were the Pharisees? They were a denomination of the, uh, the kosher tribe. And uh, matter of fact, the uh, Jewish encyclopedia today says that uh, the Pharisees are modern day, is, is basically Judaism unchanged for thousands of years. So Pharisee is just a denomination of the Jews. Just like you've got uh, Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians and Episcopalians, I guess you could, you know, they're supposed to be different denominations of Christianity, but the Pharisees were just a denomination of Judaism. 
And um, they say that Judaism is Phariseeism unaltered. They just don't use that term anymore. So, so who are the Pharisees? Take a guess. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, how shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Did you catch that? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Now, Verse 29, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong men, then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy, uh, the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now, he says, wherefore, oh, I'm sorry, okay. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world neither in the world to come. Verse 33, Either make the tree good and his fruit fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers! Who's Christ speaking to here? The Pharisees. You know, the chosen ones. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Listen carefully. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now, if you want to know what this blasphemy was of the Holy Spirit, Mark chapter 3 gives you a parallel account of this. Verse 22. And the scribes, which came down from Jerusalem, said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, 
but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. There's only one group of people in this whole world that claim that Jesus was possessed of a devil and performed his miracles by the power of the devil. Take a guess who they are. Yeah. Scribes and Pharisees, people. All right, let's go through uh, Matthew 19. We're going to go through every place where it says the kingdom of God. All right, let's go to Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, you know, it's funny, they take the word rabbi, that they translate rabbi, and sometimes they do, they call it master, and other times rabbi. Uh, they weren't consistent, but, but it, it makes sense in this sentence. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, Jesus, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Now, there are Jehovah's Witnesses and many others that will say, uh, Jesus is telling him, Oh, don't call me good. Only God is good. And they'll tell you, oh, well, Jesus is just a man. Well, if Jesus is just a man, then guess what? He was born in sin. He's a sinner. He's an imperfect sacrifice. And you better look for another Messiah. Unless Christ is sinless God come in the flesh. And if you don't believe me, read 1 Timothy 3.16 about dozen times until you get it. It says, God was manifest in the flesh. This God, Christ is asking him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. I think he's, in my opinion, I think he's asking this guy, are you calling me God? Are you acknowledging me as God come in the flesh? But the Jehovah's Witnesses will say he's rebuking this guy for calling him good like he's God. I hope that makes sense. But Jesus, my opinion, I think he's saying, you know, are you acknowledging that I'm God? Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and love, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young men said unto him, All these things have I kept for my youth. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect. Ah, you want to be perfect? If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And why is that? Because they love money more than they love God. Verse 25. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All right, let's go to Matthew 21, 23. And when he, Jesus, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priests, not the Catholic priests, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, 
By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which, if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? Good question. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. Funny, even that wicked Herod held John as a prophet. Verse 27, And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Now, here's the punchline. Verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Now, my opinion is these two sons are representative of Israel and Judah. Israel promised to serve God, but they didn't. And then Judah went and served God, but left from doing it. All right, so a certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. This is Israel. Israel was divorced, Jeremiah 3, 8. And in Hosea, God divorced Israel, but he gave them the promise of reconciliation with a new covenant. And he came to the first and said, Likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. See, Judah said, Oh, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve the Lord, but then he quit. And instead of being uh, using the scriptures, they used the Babylonian Talmud, which is the tradition of the elders, the commentary, the commentary of men. Jesus said in verse 31, Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, The first. Ah, which is, which is representative of Israel. You know, the son said, Oh, I'm not going to go work in the vineyard. But afterwards he repented and he went, right? Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, the first, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the Republicans, oh, I'm sorry, the publicans, uh, the publicans were tax collectors. I guess you could say they're like the IRS agents today. Most, Some of the most hated people in the world, right? Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. How do you like them apples? For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. What's a harlot? A whore. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Wow. You see, the kingdom of God. All right, here's uh, verse 33. Here another parable. There was a certain householder 
God the Father, right? Which planted a vineyard, Israel, and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and lent it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Who's the husbandmen? The Levites and the tribe of Judah. And he went to a far country, where? Heaven. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. The prophets, right? And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, Christ, right? They said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and see, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 30, I'm sorry, 43. Very important. Listen carefully. Jesus speaking to the Pharisees and the chief priests. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Christ told them, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Maybe that's why the New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. The Greek church was the most persecuted church in the history of the world. And the Vatican dares, they dare claim that they are the true, only true church. Well, guess what? All of Paul's epistles, his letters, were to Greek, were to churches in, in Greek speaking areas, in Greece, Ephesus, Colossians, Ephesians, you know, Philippians, Greek cities. There you go, people. All right, let's go to the book of Mark, what they call the Gospels. What is the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Verse 1, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what is what is God? What does gospel mean? Well, let's go take a look at Webster, Webster's Dictionary, the 1928 edition. This was the original. Webster could speak over 20 different languages. This guy knew the roots of all the words. He was a Bible believer. His dictionary reflects Bible words. I mean... This is the best dictionary in the world that you can get. I mean, he knew Hebrew. He knew Greek. He knew Latin. 
He knew all those things. I had a professor in college tell me that English is consists of approximately 20 to 25% of Latin words. And there's a heretic by the name of James White, doctor. And uh, all he does is bash the King James Bible and tell you, uh, the, like, for example, he'll say, well, the word Lucifer doesn't belong in the King James Bible because, well, it's a Latin word, so it doesn't belong in the Bible. Well, guess what? Uh, Luciferians know who they worship. They know who Lucifer is. But evidently, James White doesn't. So, gospel, it's a noun. The Latin word, it comes from evangelium. It means a good or jo joyful message. That's where you get the, the uh, word evangelism. And it's spelled E-V-A-N-G-E-L, angel, E-V, angel, I U M. It's funny. Evangelism has angel in it. Huh. He defines it as the following The history of the birth, life, actions, death, resurrection, ascension, and doctrines of Jesus Christ, or a revelation of the grace of God to fall a man through a mediator, including the character, actions, and doctrines of Christ, and the whole scheme of salvation as revealed by Christ and his apostles. This gospel is said to have been preached to Abraham by the promise, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Galatians 3.8 In Romans 1.1 1, 1, it is called the gospel of God. In Romans 1.16 it is called the gospel of Christ. In Ephesians 113, it is called the gospel of salvation. One, God's word. Two, divinity, theology. Verse, uh, and third, any general doctrine. How is that for a definition of the gospel? I could not improve on that if I lived to be a hundred more years old. There's no way I could improve on that. All right, Mark chapter 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And by the way, Webster was a believer. He thoroughly believed the Bible. Verse 2, all right, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare, prepare thy way before thee. Who's the messenger? John the Baptist. Verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And that's in the book of Isaiah, people. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Huh. Preach, baptism, repentance, remission, sins. Key words there, people. There's people that will tell you when uh, the Bible talks about repentance, it's talking about changing your unbelief to belief in God and Christ. But here it says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. It doesn't say unbelief. There's a famous internet preacher out in Arizona that uh, just doesn't understand repentance. It's a shame. It's a, a damnable shame, if you ask me. Telling people to repent of their unbelief. Yeah, don't repent of your sins. Just believe and keep sinning, I guess. So, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, not unbelief. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. 
not their unbelief. And John was clothed with camel's hair. Can you imagine John the Baptist going to the uh, Southern Baptist churches clothed with uh, <laughs> a hairy clothes from a camel? Uh, he'd be told to leave, I'm sure. You know, I've mentioned this before, but uh, yeah, you know, the hypocrites would be telling John, you know, you, you didn't even bother to dress honorably for the Lord. You're going to have to leave. Yeah. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Christ is going to baptize his true believers with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel all right mark chapter 4 and he Christ and he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now this is a, um, let's say you were a non-English speaker. And you looked at the word hear, H-E-A-R. And you didn't know what exactly what the word meant. They have a thing called, what's called embeds, embedded. Uh, if you take the word ear, E-A-R, and put the H in front of it, you've got hear. You know, what do you hear with? Your ear. So, you know, a lot of times if you don't understand what a word means, you can look inside the word and see what else there is. Like evangelism, you've got the word angel in evangelism. I don't know, just something to think about. Verse 10, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Ah, did you know there's a mystery of the kingdom of God? Wow. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. 
But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Do you know God hides the gospel from certain people? I mean, read this on your own. That seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing that they may hear and not understand. Why? Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these that are by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sto sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, Immediately, they are offended. People, that's why the Jesus said, He that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Because of this, they have no root in themselves. They endure for a time, but, but when they're persecuted for the, for the word of God, they're offended. They walk away. I mean, that's how it is. In Matthew 10, 22, Jesus said, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And what name is that that's hated? Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach. No, they don't hate that name. They hate the name of Jesus. That's the name they hate. Mark 417 and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake immediately they are offended and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So, and he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and, to, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth, but when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches 
so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. All right, let's take a look at Mark chapter 9. There's a lot of confusion about this. Uh, there's people that'll come up with all kinds of weird uh, theories. So let's take a look at it. Verse 1, And he, Jesus, said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There shall... That there, uh, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Uh, let's see. You could read the, the rest if you want. This is the uh, transfiguration of Jesus. Now, some people will tell you that... Uh, I don't know. They have all kinds of weird theories, like I said. But they have, they missed the point. The kingdom of God coming with power, I believe, was Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was given to the church and they were able to perform miracles similar to what Christ did. Now, Christ was resurrected on the third day. He was seen of the apostles. And then he ascended up into heaven. And he, it was told that he was going to come back again. Maybe I should cover that a little bit. I guess I should. All right, let's take a look at uh, Acts chapter 1. Verse 1, I guess. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive. You see, to the apostles he showed himself alive to whom he also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commended them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John Truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now this is where people mess up. They think until Christ returns in glory that uh, the kingdom of God hasn't come. And they're wrong. In this instance, God, uh, Christ is redeeming us from the curse of sin and death. And you're sealed. You're sealed with the promise. And when you die, you go to be with him. And when Christ eventually, uh, when Father tells his son to go get my bride to go get your bride, when that happens, huh, well, that's going to be the ultimate, that'll be ultimately uh, the, the final, one of the final acts of the book. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Listen carefully. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, 
Two men stood by them in white apparel. Obviously, these were angels. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And uh, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. Now remember, there's two Judases. There's Judas the brother of James, and then there was Judas Iscariot, the traitor. He killed himself. This is not the same Judas, okay? Verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Yeah, Jesus had brethren and sisters. Verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue Al-Sadama. I'm hoping I pronounced that right. Al-Sadama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men, um, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out, among us. Uh, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Now, the thing is, the apostles were never told to do this. They did this on their own. And they had uh, two people that they wanted to make the 12th apostle. Well, I think Christ had other ideas and chose Paul, Saul of Tarsus. So, all right, so I don't want to go, let's see, let's go to the next chapter, the power of God, verse, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So, here it is. The, the, the kingdom of God, I believe, that is, that is happening here. Now, you can read Acts chapter 2. All right, let's read verse 36. Peter's preaching here. I think it's Peter. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders, wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Oh yeah. So, verse uh, Mark 9.1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. I believe Acts chapter 1 and 2 is the fulfillment of this prophecy. So, let's take a look. Let's keep going, kingdom of God. All right, in Mark 9, 47, Jesus said, And if thine eye offend thee, Pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Let's go to Mark chapter, uh, chapter 10. All right. Uh, Mark chapter 10 and verse 13. And they brought young children to him, to Jesus, right? That he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer, or allow, suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. See, Christ loved little children. Not the way that uh, maybe people allegedly like Epstein does. But that's another story. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 12, verse 13. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. Who were the Herodians? Well, Herod. They were the, uh, he was the ruler of the district that Christ lived in. And they're trying to catch him in his words. They're trying to trick him so that they can use his words against him to sentence him to death. So, verse 14. And when they were come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? They're asking him, Can we pay taxes to the uh, Roman, to the Rome? Is it lawful? for us as of the tribe of Israel to give pay taxes to Caesar, to Rome? Verse 15, Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image? and superscription. In other words, whose image is this and writing? That's what superscription is. It's writing. Whose is this image and writing? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. 
Then came unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. Oh yeah, what happened to the Sadducees after uh, the temple was destroyed? They basically vanished because they were the uh, temple, uh, they were the ones that uh, took care of the rituals inside the temple. So when the temple was gone, basically the Sadducees uh, vanished, right? So, then came unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses run, wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her and died, neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. Now, they don't believe in the resurrection, but they're trying to trick Jesus here. Verse 23. In the resurrection thereof, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? And that's where you get the word error. It means wrong. Do ye not therefore err because ye know not the scripture? Neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Remember, people, not all the angels are in heaven. Verse 26. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. These scriptures alone put the knife into the heart of soul sleep. There are people that will tell you that you're not, uh, that when you die, that's it. Uh, until the resurrection, you don't exist in any way, shape, or form. Well, then Jesus is wrong. If that's true, then Jesus is wrong and he's a liar. Because he said, he is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their bodies only died. Their spirit and souls did not cease to exist. Otherwise, God is the God of the dead. And Jesus said, He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. You're in error. Only your body gets resurrected. And the Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for that false teaching. Verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answering him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, for thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there, there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom 
of God. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. You know what? Nobody dared to ask him a question after he answered all this stuff. Yeah. Why? Because they're make, he, Christ would make a fool out of you. If you were wrong, he'd make a fool out of you. And you don't want to look like a fool in front of all the people. So they quit asking him questions. You know, they, they tried to trick him, but they couldn't do it. Even one of the centurions, or I'm sorry, one of the, um, one of the true tribe of Judah said something very interesting. Now, in John chapter 7, verse 44, And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. All right, they're, they're getting ready to take him to crucify him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. In other words, nobody could answer questions. No, no man had ever spoken like this man had. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Oh, yeah. And then they give this big spiel about, well, you know, we're the big shots, and we don't believe in Jesus, so are you, are you deceived? Are you crazy? You trust this guy? I mean... You know, all all us big shots, we don't we're not believing in Christ. No. But even an officer said, Never a man spake like this man. Alright, so I think we're gonna close this out and uh, we're gonna continue, make it a part two. So uh all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.